Okay, so now if I press T, I press enter, T, enter, they're all different values, but you're still only using one component. That's really awesome that you can do all of that with only this with component props. In my last video, I showed you how to create this cutout border uh, for input fields that you can see the background behind it. And you only have two variants in the component and you can, you can change the labels of um, each of the input fields individually to whatever you would like. And the cutout still allows you to see the background. For example, you can see that this is not a full white background and this doesn't interfere with the with the cutout border. So if I wanted to like uh, write a longer name here, that's no problem because the, the stroke will respect that. So today, what I wanna show you is a, a lot cooler. It's basically animating these input fields to feel like you're typing a little bit. Obviously it's not gonna be perfect, but it's actually really nice. So if you, you can have individual values in these input fields with the same component. You don't need to create multiple components. For example, you can imagine that you could do like a name field and an email field and whatever else, like a phone number or something that every time you clicked, it would enter the phone number without you having like to create multiple different components just to hold those specific information. So again, here I entered 10, here it was eight, and then here, it's 8.0. So I can also press escape to cancel that. And I can press T backspace escape. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool. And I have the blinking cursor there. Even when I, when I type, it's still blinking there. And when I press enter, it goes away. And that's all done with only two extra comp uh, variants to the components that we created before. And it, you just need to add a little bit more, which is the blinking cursor, which I'm gonna bring it over here now. And this is basically what we had before. Like this is the, the file that I have on the video. Uh, I mean, not the same file, but I just copied it into a new file so I can have a separate um, thing for that. But it's essentially the same thing as you can see here. So, all right, so I'm gonna bring the blinking cursor over here. And this blinking cursor is pretty simple. It's just a six pixel frame with a line uh, stroke with, with a two pixel stroke inside with the color. And this one is six pixels with a two pixel stroke. Um, and it has the color in this one too, but except the whole, um, the whole frame is 0% opacity. So, and then it just have a delay going back and forth. This is, it repeats from one to the other, 300 millisecond delay with the 300 ease in and out, uh, smart animate. All right, so in the fun part now, um, this would be our active state, which is already uh, written active. I wanna wrap this um, information on an auto layout really quick, just for, and I'm gonna remove the padding here. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna wrap these two on an auto layout first. I'm gonna do input content. And I'm gonna do a fixed height here of 20 pixels and center it vertically by hitting option V. And this is pinned to the left. I'm gonna keep it in the center. Uh, and then now I'm gonna wrap this so it's not gonna move up like it did before. So I'm gonna wrap this in another um, auto layout. I'm gonna remove the padding again, remove this. And now this auto layout, I'll just do like input text. Um, this is the, the text that the user is allowed to change and the unit always stays the same here. I'm wrapping this input text because I wanna do a clip content here and I wanna, I wanna slide it in. So it will, it will give that effect of like sliding in and out. So here, I'm gonna go all the way where the text doesn't show. I guess this is the maximum I can go. What I can do here is add a left padding of one pixel. And then now the, the fixed text goes away. Now the other thing I want to do here is to add the blinking cursor. I'm gonna add it here and move it to the middle in between the two. 
let's just make sure that that's right. So yeah, input field, input text here, blinking cursor, and then the unit, which is the measurement unit. What we want to do here, I think, is remove the, the gap in between each item. Right now it's four. I think we want to keep that as zero. Let me see if that's what I did here. Yeah, we have a gap of zero on the input text. Um, I call this one input text on the demo and input text again. I guess I'll just leave it content on this one. Input content and input text makes more sense here. Okay, so this is the active state. Um, and then now we need a copy of this where the text will show. So we open here the input text and now we go to hug. So it's going to show the text here as intended or as expected. And this one is pretty much done. So we just, this would be the active, I'm going to name this active dash typing. So we know when to select it. So basically this is when it's blinking um, and the user had like it's typing, it's entering something. This one is the active before typing. This is active typing. And then we want to add another one, which actually is a copy of this one. But I'm actually going to do a copy of this and change. No, actually, never mind. I'll do a copy of this and then move it all the way down. So this one doesn't have the text wrap here. We don't need the blinking anymore because this is basically the state is called done. The reason why I'm creating a new one and I'm not going to use the same one for that is because I want to add a component prop here for for the content the same as I'm adding for these. So when I change that on the component, it will change for all of them except for this one. So that's how we can get always going back to X when we press um, the escape. I mean the back um, the backspace and then the the escape. Otherwise, it would save that information and it will always show what you entered. For example, the fifteen. Like it would end. This would be the end state always. The moment that you replace the two X's with some information. So, if you if you try that only with one, you're gonna see what I'm what I'm talking about. So the only thing that we need to do here, I think, actually. A uh, smart anime uh, takes in, into account the name of the layer, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna not gonna touch the label. I'm gonna delete these two, and I'm gonna paste it what I just copied from this one, and then just delete this because we don't need that. And this one actually we had four pixels in between, so now I'm gonna add those four pixels back from just on the auto layout here and the input content. Remember, I removed that when this was uh, active. So now I added it back. Okay, so now we just need to do uh, add a component prop here that would, um, we can call that input text. Let's see how the component is so far. So this one has a label text, which will change the label on top. And that's about it. If it has a label or not, and then we have this other checkbox if it has a unit or not, and then we have the states, which is pretty good. We haven't um, prototyped it yet. Uh, so what I want to change now is basically change this label where it says fixed. I'm not really sure why I named it fixed, but it doesn't really matter now. As long as they're the same name, you're good. So I'm going to I had to select it from here because I couldn't, could barely reach it there. Select the same one, and we're gonna add it as an input text now. We have that property already there, but I want to remove it just because not used with the component. Yeah, so this is I think came over when I copied it or something. I'm gonna remove that just to show you how that's done again. Uh, so again, selecting the fix, which is the text that's hitting, hidden right there. And then here, fixed and fixed. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little pencil. We do input text. 
and then the value is xx. All right. So now we just need to prototype this. So when this prototype came over, I'm actually going to remove all this. One easy way to do that is to right click and do remove interactions on the main thing. So now it's all clean. Let me just recap here. What I did was on click has active and then we have all key keyboard stuff. Okay. All right. So let's go back here. So this one on click, this one on click is pretty simple. It will just change to active. Let me just see if I added some, yeah, smart animate ease in and out of 150. I'm just going to add that. So it's probably going to be a little bit smoother. 150. Okay. So this is the very first thing. When you click on the input field, it will become this way. And then this one we want to do when you press the letter T, this one you can, oops, I keep, I keep messing it up. I keep clicking on this, but it's this plus. So we want to do here when you press a key, uh, something on your, on your keyboard, it will activate this typing one. And this one, you can do anything here. You can do multiple keys. So I'm just going to do T for type. And then you could do a click again, whatever's it's up to you. So T it would show this. So now on this one, I'm going to do when you press enter, it goes to the other one to the done. So keypad select here, press enter and it will change to done. All right. So now just to make it a little more fun, I'm going to add a few more from this one. If I press the backspace, I want to go back to this. So I'm going to change it to key slash gamepad again, backspace, and I'm going to do it on this one. If I um, press escape on my keyboard, it will go back to the to the original um, what it, the default state. And then for this one, if I press escape, it actually should go to the done because that means I typed something or actually whatever, it doesn't matter, but like it could be back to let's say if I type something and I press escape, it could be back to this one, but I'm just going to do that. Let's say if I press escape and you type something, you would go to done state. Okay. So I think from done, if I press on it again, if I click on it, it would go back to typing. We could create another state here, but I think I'll just do go back to typing. And then I think that's pretty much what we needed here. Uh, now, the only thing that's missing now is for us to define the values. So let's say, okay, so now let's name this um, width maybe. So that field is width, height, and length. Hope my English is right here. Oh, height is wrong. Missed a T. Uh, okay, so now let's just let's define the only trick here now to to make that work is that we're gonna change to active state or actually I want to do active typing. And now I want to do um, because so th this is gonna map for all the all the states here because we added that same um, text property to all three of them. Remember? So like if I change this, it's going to change to all three, except this one, because that one doesn't have the, the component property, uh, the text property added to it. So we're going to change the width to, let's say, um, let's say 10 centimeters. Okay. Now it's 10. And now all I have to do is go back to default. <clears throat> Same thing here. This one is not showing because I'm on the default. So that's remember what I just said, like we didn't add that property. So we have to change to a state that has that property. It could be here. It could be the active or it could be the done. Um, I'll just keep do the active typing so I can see it. So this one, the height, let's, let's say it's 10. Also, let's say it's a square or actually maybe let's do it different. The height is 20. Um, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna change it back to default. So when you see the prototype, it's like this. <clears throat> and same thing here, let's change that to, um, say the length is 30. Go back and for the this one, let's name it. I had another auto layout there, so I just had to click it twice to get to the input. So let's actually name this uh, weight. And let's say that this is uh, 3.5 kilos. Actually, this is, okay, there we go. And then change it back to default. All right, so let's see if our prototype now worked. Um, I'm gonna close these and see moment of truth. Okay, so now if we click on it, something's not right. But if I, okay, so I restarted it. If I press this and I press T, okay, that's working. If I press backspace, it goes back. If I press T again, if I press escape, it goes to done. This one, if I press T, it's 20, so that's working. And this one, if I press T, is 30. And this one, 3.5 kilos. So that's working as expected. Yeah, so if I go to the empty and press escape, it goes back to XX. But if I press T and escape, it stays on done. It seems like just the the, cur the blinking cursor is not working. And I'm not sure why, to be honest. Oh, somehow the interactions had reset on those. So let's see now if it's working. Oops, this is the one we wanna talk about. Okay, yeah, I don't know why the um, so if you saw here, I had the, the prototyping, the interactions set up, but in here it was not, it was removed. Oh, I see, because when I clicked right click here and I said remove all interactions, remove those as well. So all I had to do because the component was selected here and you saw a little, see if I remove this now, you see this little thing, reset interactions and now I have it back and now it's working. Okay, so now if I press T, I press enter, T, enter. They're all different values, but you're still only using one component. That's really awesome that you can do all that, all of that with only this with component props. So I hope you learned something today. And if you have questions about anything, just leave a comment below, uh, hit the like button if you learned something. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.